Hi everyone, David Millington here. I'm the C++ Builder Product Manager here at Embarcadero. I'm going to give a very short lightning talk on the advantages of the claim-based compilers that we ship with C++ Builder. So as a bit of background, uh, historically, we, and this is going back quite a few years, we had one compiler, BCC32, which is the Windows 32-bit compiler, and we moved that to OS 10 32-bit as well. And C++ started adding a lot more features that eventually morphed into C++11, and we were finding that uh, adding support for all of these into the architecture of BCC32 was quite tricky. And so we ended up making the decision to move to using Clang. Clang is an open source C++ compiler. It's very famous, very well known. And so we decided to move to that and that we would add our extensions. We have a lot of extensions to C++ so that we would get a great C++ compiler that was fully capable for modern C++ with improvements uh, with, with our, our extensions and additions. And so you might hear the phrase Clang Enhanced Compilers thrown around quite a lot, and that's how we refer to these compilers. Uh, they are Clang Enhanced Compilers. And we started using it for Windows 64 in, I think, XC2. And then we went and added several platforms, as well as upgrading the version of Clang that we were based on. And currently we have Windows 32 and 64-bit available using the new Clang compilers, uh, as well as shipping the classic BCC 32 compiler for Win32. But uh, the Clang compilers are also available for iOS and for Android, and very soon for Linux, which is coming in the next release. And macOS 64 is on the roadmap too. So we've been focusing a lot on platform support, on having wide platform support, uh, because we uh, have a, a number of very great uh, cross-platform libraries, um, such as FireMonkey and FireDAC and our, our REST and JSON solutions and, and that kind of thing. And uh, the version of Clang we're using at the moment is Clang 3.3, which has great support for C++11. On the roadmap also is upgrading to newer versions of Clang. So although we still ship, and we can, will continue to still ship, of course, the classic BCC32 compiler, we are moving to using the Clang-based compilers across all of our platforms. Uh, so the, the Clang-based compiler ones are the future. And this lightning talk uh, is just going to show a few of the advantages of using them to try and encourage you to, to migrate existing code that you have uh, towards using them. So the two general areas of advantages that I want to highlight today, the first is uh, that the code you write will be better, and the second is that the compiled application you give your users will be better. So the Clang Enhanced Compilers support modern C++, and that brings a lot of fantastic stuff. I've listed a few of my favorite ones on screen, such as lambdas, for example, uh, type inference, that's the auto keyword, uh, where you can let the compiler decide what the type of variable is for you. Range-based for loops are, are very neat, Constructors delegating to others is a feature you might not use very often, but when you want it, it is fantastic. Strongly typed enumerations, uh, having more type safety in a language like C++ is always a good thing. Uh, this is a very small one, there's a bit of a quirk. Uh, when uh, you had templates uh, before and you had a template inside a template, uh, sorry, rather you were instantiating a template inside a template, you would often end up with uh, two right arrows next to each other and the compiler couldn't handle that, it didn't understand it, you had to have right arrow space, right arrow, and that problem is solved. Plus initializer list tuples, uh, two great smart pointers, so uh, there's a, a whole session on smart pointers in Code Rage this year, but uh, if you're not already using smart pointers, uh, then, then you definitely should be. And if you are already using smart pointers, and you're probably using the ones that come with Boost, and I would encourage you to migrate to the ones that come with C++11, because they are fantastic. There's a link there to Beyond Strustrup's uh, FAQ on C++11, lists uh, a lot of items, but the key takeaway here is that the code you write is better. It is going to be clearer, smaller, safer, and much more powerful. And all of that is fantastic. Second is that the Clang-based compiler and the LVM backend behind it uh, gives a much a wider range of optimizations and much better performance. So the compiled application that you give your users will be better. 
and I'm going to show you this live. So I have here a simple console application that I wrote earlier today, and it is intended to test performance. So the same file is included in two projects here, one that uses the classic compiler and one that uses the clang compiler. And I just want to show you quickly how you switch between using the classic and clang compilers in, in one project. And that is you go to the project options, C++ compiler, and this option here, use classic ball and compiler, make sure that is unchecked and set to false. And that means that when that is unchecked, you are using the new Clang enhanced compiler. So the code is fairly simple. I have a vector of 100,000 numbers, which are all random, and an output vector that's initialized to the same size as the input. And first of all, I do some timing of doing some floating point math on those numbers and filling them in the output vector because the vector is already resized to the same size. This is just testing floating point performance, it's not testing any memory reallocation. And then similarly doing some sorting and shuffling on the vector. And all of this is repeated a few times and the timing is printed out to screen. So let's build both of those. And run the classic one, and this is going to take a few seconds to finish while we wait. Okay, so the math part, doing a square root on all those numbers, took almost 800 milliseconds. The sort and shuffle took 6.2 seconds, and the total was 7. Let's try that with the clang uh, code, and that should take about half the time, I think. And there we go, it's finished already. So the math, 360 milliseconds, which is just slightly more than twice as fast. And the sorting and shuffling, again, is twice as fast. So that is, is rather cool. There's immediate performance boost there, double the speed of your code, just by using the new Clang Enhanced Compilers. So there you go, you get much better C++ language support, you can use modern C++, and that means that the code you write is better. Much better. And you get a lot of optimizations and performance. Your exe could be twice as fast, obviously this very much depends on the code that you're using. We have some internal benchmarks that uh, show some things you can see on screen, some loop on rolling could be 5 to 35 times faster. A ray tracing demo was 2.6 times faster, using function objects was on average 2 times faster. All this means that your compiled application is better. So there you go, better code for you and better applications and faster applications for your users. And that's a lightning talk in 10 minutes over to Q&A. Okay, great. Thank you, David, for that session. It says you're muted. There you go, now you're unmuted. Just unmuted, hi. Hello. So fantastic, the advantages of Clang compiler, using the Clang compiler, that's now available for all platforms, which is great news as well. So if anybody has any questions for David on the Clang compiler or uh, that he talked about here just now, go ahead and put them in the question panel for GoToWebinar and we'll get them answered for you. So just to clarify there, the Clang compiler is on Windows in 32 and 64-bit and of course iOS and Android and Linux is coming soon. Mac OS still currently uses the classic compiler, but we do have Mac OS 64 on the roadmap, and that will naturally use the uh, the new Clang Enhanced Compiler as well. Ah, okay, I didn't I didn't realize the differentiation there. So Jim's asking, what 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 is the Clang Compiler? Maybe we should have started with a little prefix on that. <laughs> sure, here's yeah, uh, probably a good idea for the talk. Um, so our C++ compiler was traditionally uh, we had one compiler. It was called BCC. Uh, for the Borland compiler is where the name came from. And uh, then, then we moved to using Clang, and Clang is an open source compiler. Uh, it was originally written by Apple, I believe, and open source in 2007. And so we, we now use that, and uh, adding our extensions, our language extensions, gives us the Clang enhanced compiler. 
So sorry, awesome question. The question was, what is the Clang compiler as in the Clang project or, or our Clang compiler? But if the question is the Clang project, it's, it's an open source project that creates a, a C++ compiler. And we use that and that uh, becomes the Clang enhanced compilers that, that we use and we ship. So now, that's actually, it's a combination of a compiler of our compiler technology and Clang compiler technology, right? That's right, yes. So we, we have quite a lot of extensions to C++, a lot of that's to do with the, the Delphi compatibility and that kind of thing. Um, you know, we support properties, for example, and you know, a whole bunch of other sort of language extensions. And so we, uh, we extend Clang with, with support for all of our, our language additions. Now, does LLVM play at all into the Clang compiler? It does, yes. So LLVM is, uh, stands for low-level virtual machine. It's sort of like a, uh, it's not quite byte code really, but uh, it's it's a compiled target and then that, that can be used to optimize for a variety of platforms. And the Clang compilers use that as their code backend. So all the Clang compilers use LLVM to generate highly optimized code. Okay. And does the Clang compiler at all play in, all into Delphi, or is it purely for C? Well, the, the Clang front end is purely C++. Uh, but uh, the LVM part, actually, so we, obviously, as I just said, we, we use LVM for, for the actual code gen for creating the, the optimized DXCs and DLLs and that kind of thing. And that part of our uh, toolkit is, is shared between Delphi on the mobile platforms as well. So Delphi also uses LVM when it's compiling for iOS and Android and uh, that, that kind of thing. And uh, so we, we actually share a common backend there. Okay, so it does share a common backend. That's good to know. What version of LLVM yeah. is used inside the Clang compiler? Right, well, we, we currently use Clang 3.3, .3, which is getting a little bit out of date because it's up to Clang 3.9, and I think the LLVM version is, is the same. I would have to double check that, I'm afraid. And yes, we are we are planning to upgrade this. So our roadmap plans to, um, once, once we've finished the sort of wider platform support and, and we've released Linux, we're going to be working on upgrading to a much more recent version of Clang and rolling that out across all our platforms as well. And uh, also staying up to date with the latest version of Clang after that as well. Okay. So I can see a question actually that just came in about when is C++14 or C++17 compatibility scheduled to be included? Yes. Uh, well, that ties into the Clang upgrades. So Clang 3.3 only supports C++11. I'm perfectly happy with that at the moment because that is modern C++ I and mean, it gives you the, the vast majority of all sort of modern C++ things that you need. But uh, we do, of course, want to upgrade to supporting newer versions of C++. And that's that Clang upgrade that I just spoke about uh, will, will give us that. Okay, that's great. That's exciting. Does that mean the Delphi 132 compiler is slower than the Clang code gen? Uh, I am really not sure. Del Delphi has its own code gen and you know, it has its own optimizations. Um, and the Clang code gen is, is quite optimized for, for C++ and that kind of thing. And of course, on iOS and mobile, since Delphi and, and Clang share the same LVM common backend there, they, they will have all of the same optimizations applied. Yeah, that's always the problem with benchmark comparisons is there are some situations where one's faster and some situations where another one's faster. And um, you really have to just kind of look at what is going on and what makes most sense in your project. Yeah. I haven't run any comparisons comparing Delphi to, to C++, but I know that Delphi, I mean, I have seen benchmarks have been published online that stood up fairly well compared to other, other languages, including you know, C Sharp and, and that kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. As I was going to say, as I've seen lots of benchmarks that show that it's just as fast as anything else. I mean, you, you look at, um, you know, like Python or Java or interpreted languages or, or uh, virtual machine languages, and they tend to be a tier slower or a few tiers slower, depending on where they're at, right? So you have the native compiled code, which you have Delphi, at C++, et cetera, at, and then you have the next tier down is the uh, virtual machine Java type code, and then the next tier down you have the, the scripting languages. And generally speaking, 
those tiers each, you know, the top tier is fastest, the native compiled code, then the interpreted code, and then the uh, scripted code. There are some situations where the, there's some optimizations around some scripting scenarios that might be faster, but generally speaking, that's the way you see it fall out. Um, so Craig just commented, LLVM is misleading. It's actually an AST. I'm not sure what that means. Yeah, I should bring Craig on. Have him I can't actually see that in the question log I'm looking at, I'm afraid. Uh, Craig Chapman, um, he's, uh, he just sent it in the chat window. Here, I'll just unmute him. Craig, what do you want to explain oh, how that's an AST versus a oh, abstract <laughs> syntax tree? Yeah, do you hear me? Yep, I hear you now. Yep, I hear you now. Okay, so LLVM as a project is actually what's called an AST or abstract syntax tree. So effectively, this is kind of the middle stage of a compiler. You have a parser which reads the source code and analyzes it, turns it into an AST, and then the AST goes through a code generator or optimizer to generate the final output. And LLVM as a project is actually should be considered much more an AST plus some associated tools. So you have, there is a virtual machine in it which can run the byte code which is the representation of the AST, uh, and there are code generators in it. But the original project itself um, is actually an abstract syntax tree, which is why sometimes the acronym is confusing. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, thanks for that, Craig. Um... It's a, it's a good explanation. Uh, let's see, last question here. Does C++ built-in compiler use SSE2 optimizations? Uh, yes, yes, it does. So, um, yeah, the, the default uh, targets for the Clang compilers, well, at least on Windows, obviously not, not Android or something. Um, uh, the wonderful thing about Clang is that you can have uh, particular CPU targets, and you can ask us to use particular CPU features. And uh, we, we don't officially support all of those, uh, although we do have compiler flags so that you can change them. Uh, but by default, we support the i686, I think, target, combined with SSC2. All right, David, thanks for that great session and for answering all the questions. Cool.